Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. I am Manish Agrawal and in this topic of atomic structure, we will start with Thomson's atomic model. Okay. So let's begin. What were the observations on which Thomson based his atomic model? The first and the most important was that atom is electrically neutral. Okay, Everybody in the scientific community at that time knew that total charge on the atom is zero okay but at the same time thomson observed that there are something called electrons present okay so based on his cathode ray discharge tube experiments he observed that there are negatively charged particles okay negatively charged particles present in every atom in the world which means to have net charge of zero on an atom there must be some kind of positive charge also present which cancels out this negative charge okay, and based on this very conclusion he suggested an atomic model okay so let's study that see what is an atomic model an atomic model is any model which discusses or talks about the structure of an atom okay so structure of an atom means how the things inside the atom are arranged it's like what is the structure of the building you live in okay so you draw the blueprint okay where is the room how to get there and all that so similarly structure of atom is uh, what is the atom made up of and where is that material present and in what form okay which constitutes the atom so Thomson suggested that there will be a solid sphere okay in 3d the, in the photo you can see it in 2d form but it will be present in 3d so a solid sphere all right of positive charge so he made this solid sphere of positive charge because because positive charge must be present there in order to cancel out the negative charge so that atom in all will be electrically neutral okay and he knew that there are electrons there so what he said was that electrons will be embedded inside this solid sphere of positive charge so each of this small circles okay each of these smaller circles represent an electron all right so these are basically your electrons okay. Thomson didn't call them electrons all right so what Thomson called them was corpuscles okay he preferred this name over electrons so he never accepted electrons but now we know them as electrons so he said that these electrons are actually embedded in this solid sphere it's like a watermelon all right so if you have watermelon so there are watermelon seeds inside the watermelon right so those seeds are like electrons and the rest of the reddish part of watermelon that you eat okay that is like positively charged solid sphere okay so this is why some people even call this model as watermelon model okay and similarly you can also say that this model looks like a plum pudding okay so you have a pudding okay and you have plums inside it okay which which are like electrons so this is often also called as plum pudding model okay, obviously Thomson did give this name okay for him the name is still Thomson's atomic model all right but people often call it plum pudding model or watermelon model okay so these this is how the model was all right and that is it that was all the model was about okay so he further made some modifications later on for example how the electrons people started asking how the electrons will be embedded that is to say are like in a watermelon are the electrons randomly embedded inside the sphere or do they form some kind of arrangement okay some kind of pattern so obviously Thomson said that they they do form some kind of pattern okay otherwise the forces will become untenable that is to make sure that force ba forces balance out each other and energy balances are present okay 
he arranged the electrons in some pattern depending on the atomic number of the element okay you don't have to go into a detail of that all right but let's just take a quick look okay so what he said was that if if you have say one electron system okay then that one electron can be present anywhere inside the solid sphere but if you have a two electron element that is the element which has two electrons in its atom then the two electrons must be present in some form of this in some way which are diametrically opposite that is their forces can cancel out each other all right similarly if there are three electrons present in an element then those three electrons must be present at the vertices of an equilateral triangle and so on and so forth okay so he did suggest some pattern up to a certain number of electrons but after that it obviously became very difficult and you can just say that uh, he couldn't prove his theory further on all right so let's go into the analysis of this theory so the good thing about the theory was that it is the only theory that was present with us there okay there were other theories but they were even uh, worse than the theory suggested by thomson all right and even better thing was that he was able to explain the neutrality of atom okay so that was a good deal at that time because when he gave this model the protons were not discovered only electrons were discovered and observed so people knew that there is something called atom and people knew that all atoms consist of electrons but they didn't know anything about protons or neutrons so given that information coming out with this atom and giving explanation in mathematical formulation was quite advantageous for the scientific community because it led to further advancement of science in other fields okay the bad thing about it was well it was soon after a uh, seni less than a decade it was soon disproved because we finally came to know about neutrons and then later on protons okay in fact rutherford in 1910 came up with his experiment of alpha particle scattering experiment okay and based on the observations in that experiment it was easily disproved that thomson's model was wrong okay but it still gives us a good example of the fundamentals all right so that's it for the thomson's model and uh, until next time and once again thanks for watching edupedia world videos